Joining us now is Lieutenant Commander Brian Stern, the founder and CEO of Project Dynamo. He's an Army combat veteran and a Purple Heart recipient. Also joining us is Miriam Sonati. She's an American missionary in Haiti who was just rescued by the team at Project Dynamo. Miriam, uh, I want to start with you. You were in Haiti working at orphanages, at clinics to help Haitians. We've seen harrowing images from Haiti. Tell me what it was like there in those last desperate days. You know, where we work, we were actually safe. We were in a very re remote uh, area of Haiti. Um, unlike the Port-au-Prince, where we do have a missionary that serves Mission of Grace as well, you know, she's right in the forefront of it. And we were hearing from her how bad it is, how she couldn't sleep at night from the gang, uh, the, the, the gangs, the gunshots and stuff. And so we felt, you know, we felt her uh, desperation to get out. We still feel it today. Um, but we we're very uh, fortunate to be where we were. But it's also unfortunate to be uh, so far away from the action, yeah. um, say, um, that we didn't know if we were going to get out. Yeah, so you were in a very remote area, which, thank goodness, it was relatively safe compared to what's happening in the rest of the country. How did Brian's group, Project Dynamo, get you out? You know, um, when after we signed up and reached out to, to everyone, Project Dynamo is the one that, um, you know, kept us informed, kept us things, what was going on. We were, It was easy to ask them what was, you know, what's happening and stuff. Um, and then when it, we actually got the call to... Um, for our meeting place, and um, we had to make sure it was safe for us to drive during the night to get to it. Um, so yeah, the, the the project was supposed to be for all four of us. Unfortunately, something happened to the plane with gas and stuff, and it didn't happen. So we still have two people that were waiting to get out. Brian, take us through how complex this rescue mission was. I mean, did you coordinate with choppers, planes, or boats? I mean, this is a country where gangs are rampaging and shooting almost anything that moves at some point. Yeah, the, the, the gang part is able to be dealt with. Uh, this was our 610th mission in, in uh, eight or nine different war zones in the last two and a half years from Afghanistan to Ukraine to Sudan to uh, Israel and Gaza. So, you know, this, the, this kind of environment is our office space, which sounds kind of funny. This particular operation, um, uh, this particular operation, we had a fixed wing aircraft, we had a maritime piece to it, and then a land part to it as well. So it was it was very complicated because uh, because Miriam was so far away. She was outside of the range of she was outside of helicopter range. The airfield that we had to use was it was extremely austere, um, and uh, which presents its own challenges and all kinds of other things. So yeah. it was complicated from the perspective of lining up the daisy chain and then having contingency plans for when things go wrong and we, in fact we we had a plane go down so we had a we it's a good thing we had some plans in place to to be ready to deal with it well i i know that you say this is your office space working in war zones but, but how dangerous are the conditions in haiti right now we just heard the state department spokesman say it's one of the most dire uh situations in the world at this moment yeah it, it's 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 uh it's uh, it's extremely it's very dangerous. Obviously, the the biggest problem is is that this is more like a very organized riot with machine guns. It's not a in a true insurgency. It's not a true civil war. It, there's it's not very organized. The gangs are are uh, a lot of them are just are kids with bell fed machine guns who are just looking to to kill stuff. So they don't, they don't really respond well. There's not a lot of command and control from the leadership down. There's some, but it's, it's, it's not as organized as other war zones uh, by comparison. You've gotten more than 100 requests from people from Americans to get out. When you often show up, I know there are even more sometimes. Uh, how many more rescue missions do you think you can pull off? And will you be able to get Miriam's two friends who were left behind? So we, we continue to operate as long as we have people asking us for help and as long as the funding holds out. We're entirely donor funded um, and we don't get a, we don't get us we don't get anything from the federal government. So uh, these these things do cost money. The airplanes cost money. The helicopters cost money. Boats cost money. Uh, um, so projectdynamo.org is our website. If anybody wants to donate, all the money goes to saving saving Americans like Miriam. So while there's lots and lots of people asking for help, there's lots and lots of people that are trapped. Our registrations are increasing. And I can tell you right now, we, we're not making enough money to rescue everybody. So we're going to continue yeah. to operate while we can. But it really is a financial resource problem. Miriam, you must be so grateful to Brian sitting next to you and his, his group for getting you out. 
My whole family is. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.